Hello, I'm Tony DeMaria, the editor of Jack, and we have three papers in the July 10th issue with new insights into very different topics. About half of our heart failure patients have preserved left ventricular ejection fraction. Even when these patients are stable and well compensated, exercise intolerance remains a significant manifestation of their disorder. In the first paper I want to talk to you about, Haykowski and colleagues report on the effect of endurance training on the determinants of peak exercise oxygen consumption in elderly patients with heart failure and preserved ejection fraction. They evaluated the effect of four months of supervised endurance exercise training in patients with a median age of 69. This was not marathon training. During the study, however, exercise intensity did increase from 40% to 70% of heart rate reserve. The investigators found that peak exercise VO2 was significantly increased in those patients undergoing exercise training compared to 19 control patients. The main new finding of this study was that the increased peak exercise AVO2 difference was the primary contributor to the increase in exertional capacity rather than an increase in peak exercise stroke volume or cardiac output. Thus, in elderly patients with heart failure and preserved ejection fraction, Peripheral mechanisms such as improved microvascular and or skeletal muscle function are the major contributor to the improved exercise capacity that comes from endurance activity. Another paper in the July 10th issue evaluated two different catheter uh, ablation approaches for the treatment of electrical storms of ventricular tachyarrhythmias. These investigators evaluated 92 consecutive patients with ischemic cardiomyopathy and electrical storms defined as three or more ICD firings in a 24-hour period. Patients were treated with one of two approaches. Uh, the first was with radiofrequency lesions confined to the endocardial surface alone. The second was with uh, radiofrequency lesions of both the endocardial and epicardial uh, surfaces ablating all potentials within the scar, a procedure these investigators called homogenization of the scar. The recurrence rate of any ventricular tachycardia was 47% in the patients who received the limited ablation as compared to only 19% in the patients who received homogenization of the scar. These results are novel and suggest a new ablation approach for the treatment of ischemic patients with electrical storms can be very effective. A number of mutations in several genes encoding ion channels and channel interacting proteins have emerged over the last decade as the basis for a variety of inherited cardiac arrhythmias. In the July 10th issue, Laurent and colleagues described multifocal ectopic Purkinje-related premature contractions, uh, a condition they term a new SCN5A-related cardiac channelopathy. Now, this SCN5A mutation was identified in three unrelated families comprising 21 individuals. It was characterized by narrow junctional and rare sinus beats competing with numerous premature ventricular contractions with right and or left bundle branch block patterns. Uh, the investigators also found in this group dilated cardiomyopathy in six patients, atrial arrhythmias in nine individuals, and sudden death in five patients. Now, the good news is that this syndrome is surprisingly highly responsive to hydroquinidine. However, it remains to be shown whether this simple therapeutic approach may limit the risk of sudden death. This is Tony DeMaria for another edition of Inside Jack.